we really are at a point now where we, we can't cope with what it is that we're expected to deal with. Sickness and mental health problems amongst my colleagues are, are rife, really. Um, you know, we've got examples, and I know of police officers who've been conveyed to hospital from work because they've had a meltdown. I'm aware of instances where sergeants on our public protection units are allocating work on the basis of who's the least tearful that morning when they get to work. In the last sort of 15 months or so, um, the Police Federation in West Midlands have referred just over 80 people to the, the National Police Federation Welfare Support Programme. And those are people who are they're undergoing a significant mental health crisis. Uh, they're experiencing suicidal thoughts and tendencies, and, and they are at risk of doing something really serious to hurt themselves. And this is only as a result of the pressures that they're being put under. And, you know, everybody keeps hearing that crime's down and everything. Crime's not down. Crime is not down at all. Um, you know, we haven't got enough officers to do what's been expected of us. The time's come to say, you know, enough really is enough. You know, we need some proper investment in policing. We need a proper recruitment programme. And we, tr we need to try and resource it in the way that we all know it should be resourced. I investigate homicides, suspicious deaths. Um, it's difficult and traumatic work. Um, you know, when I joined the police, I understood that I would be tested on occasion. Tested to the point where I... Who knows what's going to happen? I think everybody accepts that when they join the police. Um, but this is something completely different, is in that there is no downtime in between these critical incidents, these critical, complex, heartbreaking investigations. The public suffer as a result, don't they? You know, we need police officers to be at the top of their game. We don't need tired, broken people trying to do their best with, with, with equally broken people. You know, it is a recipe for disaster. If we're going to properly be able to protect the public and do what, what they expect of us, um, we need some boots on the ground, really. Um, certainly in my world, homicide investigation, you know, we, we rely a lot on intelligence quite often. Um, and what we're finding now when we're getting cases is that our intelligence is starting to dry up in about 2014 because we haven't got officers out in communities being proactive, talking to people, turning people over and dealing with low-level criminality. You know, there's all sorts of intelligence that we can glean from dealing with people that are involved in that kind of thing and we've just not got the opportunity to do it. And I do worry that actually the key to resolving a lot of these issues is through the, the proper collection and use of intelligence um, and we're not providing ourselves with the opportunity of doing that. You know, we, we've got response officers who are, um, you know, going from job to job to job to job. Um, they're not having the chance to resolve the incident that they're at before they're being cleared by the controller to go to the next emergency. And we haven't got an option to say to somebody who's been beaten up or held at knife point or something, well, actually, we haven't got anybody to send. I always wanted to be a police officer, um, and I'm proud to be a police officer. I'm really proud that I represent West Midlands Police. Uh, I've had my moments when I've considered whether this really is the career to me because, you know, I've got a family and I've got other people to consider as well. There's a lot of us that we want to stick it out. This is what we signed up to do, you know. Uh, we want to serve the public, we want to do what's right, we want to do what the public expect of us. But I think for people coming into it who perhaps aren't as, as settled in the role, um, you know, that they will be looking at getting out. Certainly a lot of my colleagues that I speak to, you know, are actively seeking alternative employment. Now, last week, uh, when I looked, there was 570 police officers and police, police staff off sick in Westminster Police. Over a third of those are with stress-related or mental health issues as a result of the job. You don't need to be a doctor to, to work out that actually that, that figure's likely to be a lot higher, isn't it? Because people will be experiencing all sorts of other health issues which actually are attributable to the stress that they're under.